What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, by demand, and I mean high demand, we're talking APRV, airway pressure release ventilation. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, everything about APRV in this video. Before we jump into that, head over to Respiratory Coach Academy at www.respiratorycoach.com to find the resources you're looking for to pass your credentialing exams on the first attempt. If you will go check that out, I'd be greatly appreciative of that. Now let's talk about APRV. Now we're going to give you four key points to simplify APRV for you. Okay, now APRV is continuing to evolve. Even we, we have learned a lot about it and how we're using it. This is not uh, uh, just a, a, a cookie cutter type mode that you're just gonna every single time set the same settings. The settings and the, the, the physiology behind APRV is very specific based off of the uh, time constants and the pathophysiology of your patients, okay? But when we get into APRV, what we see is that it looks something like this. And, and before we do that, hold on, before we do that, APRV, remember I said it stands for airway pressure release ventilation. And that's exactly what happens. You can see here, we hold a pressure and then we release for a short amount of time and we come right back up and hold. Release right back up and hold. So that's where the name comes from, airway pressure release ventilation. Now, it was, it was described uh, early on as uh, two varying CPAP levels that generated a pressure gradient to do two primary things. One, to establish mean airway pressure, but also to aid with ventilation. And so we're gonna dive in and talk about those here in just a second. Before we talk about these four key components, I wanna to talk to you about the settings. And you can find all this information, if you're interested, in Egan's, shocker, page 1078. This is in the 49th chapter of the 13th edition. And it highlights the four settings here. You have a high PEEP, some refer to it as a high CPAP. You have a low PEEP, or a low CPAP, and then you have a time high and a time low. Those are your four settings, so just think about it. You have a high pressure with a time high, and then you have a low pressure with a time low. Those four settings right there give you everything you need to set up and, and, and manipulate APRV to the appropriate settings for your patients. Now, if we were to label those up here, we would see that this point right here is our high PEEP. Some say high CPAP, some say high pressure. Whatever vent you're working with, this is your high PEEP level, okay? Now, remember we hold it for amount of time. So this is your time high. How long are we going to hold at that high PEEP level? And then we drop down here to P low, which is pressure low or PEEP low or CPAP low. Okay? And then we hold, that little, little hold right there is time low. Now that's the settings, okay? Now when we talk about where normal settings, Egan's again addresses those, it says usually for your, for your high PEEP, you're starting somewhere in the ballpark of 20 to 30 centimeters of water pressure, but may be higher and vary depending on your patient's pathophysiology specific to them, okay? So remember, there's no, no just set it at 25 every single time. You gotta know your patient. What is my current plateau? What is my current mean airway pressure? and we have to use and take all of that into consideration. Now, the next thing we do is we're gonna set the, the low PEEP or the pressure low. Now, now, low PEEP typically is set on a PEEP of zero. Now, we're gonna explain this soon. Um, and Egan's actually even says set at zero up to about five centimeters of water pressure, but you're using very low levels of PEEP, if any at all, which I'm gonna explain here in just a second. Now, when you talk about your time high, you say, okay, well, how long are we gonna hold this? Because it looks like we're holding it for a long period of time, and we are. Um, so Egan's talks about that. It says your time high, usually about three to five seconds. And what this does is it generates 
um, a respiratory rate. Now it's funny because we don't call it respiratory rate. We call them drops. How many drops happen every minute? But all that is is going from from a high pressure to a low pressure. Anytime pressure decreases, that's what we know as exhalation, right? We take a breath in, hold it, and then let it out. And what we get is a release of volume. We can recognize that as an expiratory phase. And so um, we're looking for, you know, a drops um, or a time high in conjunction with a time low that yields around a rate of about 10 to 15 drops or breaths per minute. And then the low pressure time, this is the one that kind of gets tricky. We'll talk about it on a second. It's very, very short. Okay. It's a very short uh, time low. I'm going to bring it back because it's actually one of the points that I have to make here. Now I'm going to clean my screen here up here so that we can talk about these four points. Now the first one here is MAP, me, me, M -A -P, mean airway pressure. Don't get this confused with mean arterial pressure. This is mean airway pressure, okay? Now, what we know about mean airway pressure is that mean airway pressure is if we were to draw an illustration of it, we would come in here and we would color in all of this region beneath our pressure waveform, okay? So all of this is representation of our mean airway pressure. The more shading you do, the higher your mean airway pressure will be, okay? And so that's point number one is that, that this pressure here held for the time high, it equals our MAP. Now MAP is important because MAP is what aids in oxygenation. So this is where we're going to get the oxygenating effects. Hold that those alveolar units open at that higher pressure and give it time for gas diffusion to occur so we can increase the amount of oxygen that makes its way from inside the alveolar units across the AC membrane and into the pulmonary capillaries and out for systemic circulation. So this is all what happens with MAP, okay? Now, the next one here are the drops. What's the purpose of the drops? Why can't we just hold it like this forever? Well, the purpose of the drops, as we've already kind of explained, is to create a pressure gradient that occasionally we allow for a large exhalation. We allow for gas to, to leave the pulmonary units, okay? This is, some refer to it as an expiratory phase. We don't think of it like that because it's very, very short, but that's actually what it is and what it serves the purpose for is for bulk CO2 removal. This is going to aid this drop here, this drop here, this drop here is going to uh, create a mechanism for which CO2 is exhaled. So if you think about it, if we just mimic this and we say, okay, take a breath in, hold it, hold it, hold it, let it out. Back up, hold it, hold it back. What happened with the drop? We exhale, that allows for CO2 removal. So if you have a patient who is hypercapnic and they are in APRV and you need to get rid of more CO2, then likely you're going to have to create more drops per minute. More drops would be the same as increasing the respiratory rate um, of a traditional mode of mechanical ventilation. So that is the purpose of the drops is uh, heavily associated with getting rid of CO2 and this term bulk CO2 removal, okay? Now I say spontaneous up here because there's a lot of controversy over um, are these patients, should these patients be paralyzed or not paralyzed? I'm not here to debate the evidence on that. I'm here to tell you the theory about APRV. Spontaneous respirations are allowed in APRV. It's designed as such. And so what we'll see is when a patient is breathing spontaneously, we'll see something like this up here at our pressure high. Now, we're not typically down at our pressure low long enough for spontaneous breaths to happen, which we'll see here in just a second. But the patient can breathe on top of these pressures, which is why they're called PEEPs and CPAPs, because the patient can breathe spontaneously on top of this high pressure, which is gonna do what? It's gonna give you more opportunity for added minute volume, which is gonna help also with CO2 removal, but also the active diaphragm 
contracting also helps to improve blood flow through the heart with those pressure gradients occurring at that pressure high. And so we see where spontaneously breathing patients um, by design uh, are allowed uh, on top of our high pressure limits and our lows, we're just typically not there long enough for the patient to breathe. And then the last thing we see here is auto peep. Auto peep uh, is a part of APRV. Remember, we're taking these, we're holding this pressure for this long time and then we're gonna have a very quick release. And then right back up. Now, I didn't get all of that air exhaled. I, I, I had auto peep there. I had, I had um, uh, what we refer to sometimes as air trapping. But you see the difference here in this mode, while air trapping and auto peep is typically a bad thing, in this mode of mechanical ventilation, auto peep is intentional. So we refer to this as intentional auto peep or intentional air trapping. Because what happens when we drop this pressure all the way down to P low, which a lot of times is set at zero, you can see we don't actually get to zero though, right? That's right, because we're generating auto peep. Now, the way this is determined is by looking down at your flow waveform or your flow scalar graphics. And we learned way back in school that if the flow waveform fails to reach back to baseline, then it's an indication of what? Air trapping. Here, we're doing it intentionally. Egan's talks about it right here. It says, uh, time to be determined by the expiratory flow. Expiratory time is limited to the time needed to allow expiratory flow to decrease to 70 to 75% of peak expiratory flow. So what does that mean? That means if our peak expiratory flow down here is 100, then our time low needs to be adjusted to capture it as it decays to about 70 to 75% of that, okay? Now there's different methods and different thought processes on where that should be captured. But the 70 to 75% is the method and the description and the number provided here out of Egan. So that's what I'm giving you. I really just want you to recognize that we are going to be monitoring and adjusting this T-low as your patient's compliance improves or declines this time low time might need to be adjusted to remain in that desired percentage mark of peak expiratory flow, which is about 70 to 75%. But this is all intentional. We want to trap because what we don't want to do is recruit, 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 and then go all the way down here and be at zero for too long. And then what we find is that now we're de-recruiting. So I want enough time for that bulk CO2 removal, but not enough time for alveolar collapse. And that is why we intentionally air trap. Now, APRV, uh, you know, some, some, some love it, some hate it. Uh, I'm, I don't have a preference one way or another. When used effectively, I've seen it being a very effective mode of mechanical ventilation, but it also comes with hazards, concerns, um, things that we need to keep in mind, okay? First of all, with this big drop, this increase in pressure and this hold and then this release, what we can find is that these volumes can be very large sometimes, much higher than sometimes the, the, the um, recommended six to eight mLs per kilogram. Now, if that's the case, then we know that we're putting our patient at risk as Egan, as Egan states um, right here, can put your patient at risk for lung injury, barrel trauma, volume trauma. That is um, a part of a hazard or a concern that you wanna watch for. So we just don't ignore those volumes. We realize that those volumes can be um, hazardous to our patients. It also talks about um, the PEEP. PEEP is established by creating auto PEEP. Auto PEEP is established in lung in lung units with long time constants, not short time constants. And so what we see is that while we're trying to do this intentional auto peep because of um, the, the, the lack of homogenous pathophysiology, so not all lung units are going to empty at the same rate, you can get various uh, levels of this auto peep that's not homogenous amongst all, and we need to be uh, aware of that. And then likewise, uh, P high can cause excessively high pressures, uh, can be associated with barrel trauma, can cause um, cardiovascular compromise and things like that. So 
very brief overview of APRV. But don't forget, it has hazards like everything we do comes with hazards. So quick recap here. Remember, your P high and your, and your time high establish the size of this box. The bigger this box, the higher the mean airway pressure, that's your oxygenation tool. The drops, every time we drop, we're going to get removal of CO2. This is going to aid us in ventilating our patients. We can allow for spontaneous breathing on the top of these high pressures. And then finally, auto peep is a part of the strategy. You're not trying, don't come into a patient with APRV and go, oh my gosh, they're air trapping. I want to give them a longer expiratory time or I'm going to increase this time low because they're air trapping. I want to fix that. That's not going to work out well for you in this mode. It's designed to function based off of intentional auto peep. Now the question everybody has is how do we wean from APRV? And that's what we call the drop and stretch method. And that's going to be a future video. So I hope you stay tuned for that because uh, it's interesting when you realize how APRV just transitions right in to CPAP. Okay, so uh, that's APRV. I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay right here with me on YouTube uh, at Respiratory Coach. If you haven't already done so, please uh, hit the button to subscribe. Um, tell me what you think about this video. Do you like it? Do you not? This is by no means an all-encompassing video over APRV. This is an introduction, uh, a, a 10, 12, 15-minute introduction into the basic concepts of APRV. We can go much deeper in all of this. Uh, so, but tell me what your thoughts are with APRV. Come follow me on Instagram, TikTok, at Respiratory Coach, Joe Lewis at LinkedIn. And then don't forget about www.respiratorycoach.com for the resources you're looking for, the TMC and the CSE boot camps, so you can pass that exam on the first attempt. Hey, remember, average is easy. Don't be it.